Welcome back to the channel guys. I hope you can hear me. The wind's kind of blowing a little bit and there's some road noise. So I'm going to go through this exterior real quick with you. I'll mention as I go inside the colors, length, everything of this. But I'm just going to go over the exterior with you real quick. You can see they've got the heated tank box cover underneath. They have the awning as an option. And then these little vans, you're going to have to wait till the end of the video to see what's going on in the bathroom. A little bit different here. So stay tuned to watch that. You've got your outside shower, wood box door that feeds all the way through. These are adjustable hinges, as you can see as I pull this. Sucks that in. Keeps it tight against our weatherproofing seal. You've got a seal both on the exterior and then on that interior. So this feeds all the way through to your wood box. Keep all your wood, kindling, everything in here. And then you don't have to get up in the middle of the night or anything to get it out. So they do have locks on those. And you have your water heater. This one's a little bit different. I, I don't generally use this water heater. It is a two-way, so meaning it, it'll run off LP or AC power. That is an option when you're specking your camp out. And then because of the way that this one lays out interior, I did have a little extra space on this exterior. So we added a door here so that they can keep Dutch ovens and stuff in it because they have the pull out camp chef in this one so it slides out and then you've got these little clips that'll lock it out super nice it's got the light above it you can cook do all of that stuff outside keep the mess outside to where you don't have to do it on the interior so pretty slick setup i if the storage isn't an issue on the exterior and even if it is um some of you have probably watched our videos with the boxes that go underneath we can do them on any camp so if that's a big hold up on doing the camp chef i'd say do the extra um, lower storage boxes and do the camp chef because it's it's pretty slick setup you do have your solar panels Two solar panels come standard on all of our camps, regardless of what your battery setup is. We can add more if that's something you're interested in. You have your coax connection for an antenna, your water fill, and then this is just storage. There's not much storage either on this back, just due to the layout. So they've got their sewer hose, their fresh water tank, their pump, and everything's back here. All of your winterized stuff is back here. And then it is set up, all of our camps come set up with a receiver on the back. They're also wired um, and we wire them all the way through. So you do have electric brakes, all of that stuff on your backup trailer. So all DOT approved, LED lights. You've got your markers on the top as well. And then in this side, you've got your battery bank. If I can get it open. These are adjustable to where you can adjust them to where as this seal kind of squishes down that you can still maintain a good seal. So big bank of batteries. Then you've got your solar controller, lights, all of that stuff back in here and then more room for storage. Your city hookup. So if you do plan on going to campgrounds, being stationary, anything that way you can hook into the, the water and also your power and then you don't have to worry about running any of that. Your forced air furnace, your electrical connections. This is a 25 foot cord, so you can stretch it out, get it where you need to. And then you have your vents for your fridge, insulated plumbing, and this. I don't know if I've showed this for a while. This has storage under the deck. So, I keep like this one, it's got her bars for her equalizer hitch. You can keep your stabilizer jack handles, all of that stuff, tire chocks, everything that you don't worry about getting wet or anything. I keep all of that stuff in here. So kind of a cool little feature that keeps things out of your storage in other areas. So 
two seven gallon propane tanks come standard on them we put these heavy duty covers on them keep everything the most common thing that we see with a lot of the rvs that come is that the propane pigtails are all sun rotted and everything so we try and keep all of that stuff covered up you've got your electric jack and then your two and five sixteenths coupler so Anyways, I think that's a pretty brief description of this one on the exterior. Now the moment you've all been waiting for, the interior. I'm I'm assuming that's what you've all watched this long for. But let's see what it has to offer. So, first thing you notice, Brazil wood cabinets. It's become very popular. This is a naughty alder wood. Um, stained in a Brazil wood finish. Like I say, it's become one of the most popular color options that we have, um, but it turns out super nice. But anyways, this is a X28. So legally DOT requires us to distinguish from bumper to tongue. So this one is going to be 28 foot from bumper to tongue. You can figure about six feet for your normal bumper pull. If you do the deck, I can do the deck however big you want. So this one is a 22 foot box with your six foot for bumpers. So anyways, we'll start here. Maybe I'll go through all your color options while I'm thinking about it. So you, I've already mentioned Brazil wood cabinets. This is a dockside pier floor. And then we have a Texas mesquite wall. And I can't remember right off the top of my head, but I want to say this is called River Gold for the countertops. And then it's got the chocolate brown recliners. So as we always start up here in the front, pretty good sized closet in this one. It does have the lights and everything in it. Soft close hinges. And then you have your dovetail drawers underneath and they have the latches also you can see how that pulls them keeps them closed stainless steel appliances this is a two-way fridge i tell you that every time okay if we turn this on i usually always have these set on auto what they'll do on auto is they're going to search for ac power first whether it's shore power or generator whatever that way it's going to search for that first just because it's going to be most efficient on that if it can't find that, it switches to LP or propane automatically. So right now we're running on AC power. You can see it's a pretty good size fridge. And then your freezer up above. And then you have your microwave. This does have the air fry in it. So super nice option, especially if you match this with the uh, inverter you can run it while being off grid everything if not it is wired like i say for shore power to run on a generator you've got your propane light this puts out a ton of light to where once it's dark you can light this up and it it will light the entire camp so really nice you can dim them down if you want um, to take a little bit of that brightness off you have your monitoring panel. This will run through all your tanks, your batteries, everything, tell you your levels there. Then you have your water pump. And then these switches are for heated tanks. So this one has boxed and insulated tanks that have air plumbed into them or ducts plugged in, plumbed into them from the forced air furnace. And then it also has electric heating elements, which is what these are here. They're nice, they're on a thermostat. Well, the tank ones are on a thermostat to where once it drops below temperature, it brings it up automatically, shuts off when it's up to temperature. Kind of neat feature. Um, I do use these kind of as a backup. I generally always have my furnace running if it's cold anyways, so that usually takes care of everything. This fourth switch, that's for interior cabinet lights. So all of your cabinets are lit. And then this one has your water heater. This is a two-way water heater, meaning it'll run off AC power or propane as well. So gives you some options. I don't do many of these, but it is an option 
if that's something that you want in your camp. So lots of overhead storage. You have your gas struts, also with your soft close hinges, AC outlets, then you have your range, stainless steel range and oven. Below it, you have a heat register, some AC plugs, and then this is your where your converter is. It also houses all of your fuses and breakers. So, and then this one's got quite a few drawers in it. Like I say, all dovetail drawers with your catch hinges or your catch latches. And then you have your reclining sofas. And I, to tell you the truth, I'm quite impressed with this product. It seems to be well built, holds up well. So I've been happy with the recliners that we've been using. These windows are all sliding windows. They do have the screens in them. And then your split twins. Now this has become quite a popular option too. You've probably seen some of our other videos with the split twins in them whether it's a bunk above or however you decide to lay it. This one, they just went with overhead storage above. And then they have the drawers beneath each one. And then they've got the little nightstand in between with the drawer with USB ports to charge phones or whatever that way. Reading lights underneath them. And this one does have the stereo package or the entertainment package. And then they have an entertainment center. They didn't get the TV, but the TV is wired to where it can go on top of the entertainment center or it is wired up to where they can mount it on the wall. Then you've got your wood burning stove. I don't have this one burning. It's kind of warm today. So I opted out of burning this one for the video, but this is a game changer. A lot of you have seen our videos with these burning. There's no comparison to the type of heat and the insulation values that you'll find in one of these camps. So this one does have the forced air furnace, um, as well as the fantastic fan. So your thermostat and remote for those are there. Does have the rosewood trim on the ceiling. And then it also has air conditioning too so pretty well equipped more storage above your big deep single sink with a row of drawers and then more storage below now this is where it gets a little bit different not so much this part this is your pull out pantries so you've got them top and bottom but in this bathroom they have done a composting toilet. So this one I did plumb for a stationary toilet. It does have a black tank and everything to where if down the road they decide they don't want to do the composting anymore, it's easy for me to plumb and set a toilet and everything. So I've got everything there if that's the route that they want to go. But for now, it's station. It's got the composting toilet. So this is the nature's head. It's pretty high end as far as I know, as far as composting toilets. I, I'm not an expert on composting toilets, but from what I've read, this one's pretty good. So anyways, we do offer those as an option. And like I say, I, from a, a resale standpoint or anything that way, it makes a lot of sense to plumb it for a stationary toilet just just in case. So a lot of these I'll do, like I say, in, in the end it's your camp and I'll do it how you want to, but generally that's what I try and talk you into. So does have your medicine cabinet, no vanity in this one, a little bit smaller as far as the bathroom space. You do have your 12 volt fan, your frosted window, and then this one has the 24 inch shower and then they did the shower curtain versus the glass door or the accordion door in this one so a little bit different that way with the composting toilet um kind of kind of tells you a little bit about the camps and how versatile they are and how you can customize them how you want them so 
Anyways, I'd love to hear your thoughts. You guys are always great to leave comments. Um, let us know what you think, what you'd change, and everything that way. As always, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, please do so. Like, share the videos. It helps us get our product out there. So we appreciate you and thanks for watching.